Pokemon. Um, just being able to to take hits a little bit better, it's naturally quite bulky. Um, and so being able to, to deal with that feels really good. All right, so let's get into a game one of the VGC 2022 Vancouver Regional Championship Finals between Gavin Michaels and Zach Amerzian. Zach on the top of your screen with a Nihiligo Calyrex Shadow Rider lead, and then Gavin on the bottom of your screen with Grim Snarl Venusaur. Yep, and this uh, Nihiligo, certainly an interesting selection, maybe desperate to try and see something like, ooh, I don't know, a Charizard that it would have much preferred. And the Venusaur is not what it wanted to take a look at because I don't see a real answer to this Venusaur over on Zach's side of the field. And with that in mind, I mean, that just leaves you so much room for the Grim Snarl to maybe set up a screen. Uh, obviously, a light screen would be absolutely huge here when you're facing down two special attackers um, and a special attacker that wants to boost itself as well. That also means Gavin has complete control of the weather uh, whenever it needs to. You know, he gets to choose. There's no weather war in this matchup, right? Like we saw in his top four, there was always that consideration of playing around the, um, the issue uh, of Kyoga coming in. Doesn't have to worry about this. Well, there are no switches here in the first turn of game one. Instead, Gavin deciding to Dynamax, or Gigantamax, excuse me, the Venusaur here right away. So you can go for T-Max Vinelash, potentially even other things like Max Quake into Nihiligo. Definitely would not appreciate that attack. And is Zach going to respond on his own? No, no Dynamax. Instead, we'll just, uh, we're going to have a light screen out of Grim Snarl on Gavin's side. So that will mitigate the damage of special attacks for the next eight turns. As for uh, Astro Barrage hitting both targets there, but not doing a lot of damage. Meteor Beam, now it's time for the animations. This is something that the Lunala also has access to on Gavin's end. It's a two-turn attack that you're able to activate in one turn because of the power herb. So you'll be able to use it, get that special attack buff into the Venusaur, bringing it down to half HP. But then the G-Max Vine Lash into Calyrex will bring it down under half its HP, meaning another attack would take it down. And even if you don't target the Calyrex, eventually the Vine Lash damage will do it. Yeah, the Vine Lash is gonna start adding up and that's a really good turn for Gavin, right? Is the Venusaur is looking really, really healthy here. The Nihiligo uh, is sort of the focal point right now of what Zach has out on the field because it did get the special attack buff and even with that special attack boost from uh, charging up the Meteor Beam, the Venusaur still felt really, really safe. I think the Grim Snarl may have done just enough at this point to be able to say, you know what, um, I got the light screen set up. I would love to see Gavin kind of try and turn the screw here a little bit and get that Venusaur using its chlorophyll and just taking those knockouts, especially with the Calyrex almost being uh, taken off the field, right, by uh, the, the presence of the, the Vine Lash tick damage. Here's Rotom. This is what I really wanted to see. But Nihiligo going for the Dynamax here. Yeah, Nihiligo stealing the spotlight. We thought that Rotom Heat is a great Dynamax option because if Groudon sets the sun up for you, you're going to have boosted Max Flares. You have Max Lightning in case the Charizard is in the back. But instead, Zach deciding Nihiligo, if you can get a knockout on this turn and get this beast, bo beast boost to start rolling in, that could be really helpful for Zach's cause. This Max Rock Ball will target into the Venusaur, and it is not enough thanks to the light screen that the Grim Snarl set up on the previous turn. It will set up the sand here, so there'll be some chip damage at the end of the turn. But then Max Quake from Venusaur, that's four, that, that's really strong into Nihiligo, but it's actually not enough. It will get a special defense boost onto it, but I was ex kind of anticipating it to do more damage. Well, that's that Max Rockfall coming into play, setting the weather and being really impactful, of course, on, on how you deal with this Nihiligo. The Rotom getting a little bit of chip damage on the way in. I do like Nihiligo as the focal point here. I think that's, that's really important to note. And the Max uh, Rockfall setting up the sand as well is going to get chip damage going all around the board as well. But you want chip damage? I got chip damage for you. It's G-Max Vine Lash, and it racks up between turns. So that Rotom switch in, it's almost down to half. I do think the Nihiligo is still in a little bit of danger, especially if that Venusaur decides to go for it, uh, you know, a little bit earlier on uh, by just maybe switching in the sun. Uh, but this Venusaur, you know, if it doesn't get the sun this turn, this Venusaur doesn't get to enjoy its third turn of Dynamax. It's as simple as that. And the value of that is really up to Gavin on, on how he wants to play this one out. No switches, Max Guard instead from Zach on this turn on the Nihiligo. So if the scary face goes mm. into that slot, he called it correctly. No scary face for Gavin. And the Max Ooh. Quake also targeting Nihiligo. So a free turn for this overheat to connect on the Venusaur and take it out. You trade those two stat dro or the drops on your special attack anytime to get rid of Venusaur. That is a huge turn for Zach, right? The Max Guard being so impactful there, making sure that the scary face doesn't come through. I, I was thinking so much about the sun 
stun being needed for the Venusaur, but Scary Face will do the job as well. And the Nihiligo just seeing that, being able to max guard. Actually, the first knockout of the game, even though I think Gavin had a much more aggressive lead here, uh, heading over, of course, to uh, Zach's side of the field. So he's got that Pokemon advantage, and he's got one more turn of the Dynamax available. This Lunala is going to come in, is, of course, uh, taking advantage of the Shadow Shield right now, so probably feeling pretty good. But this Nihiligo, you know, wants to start picking up knockouts and, and maybe trying to run away with the game. I would argue that the Grim Snarl is a, a juicy looking target because then you get rid of the threat of the scary face which could cause problems this turn and in the future. What is unfortunate though for Zach with his Nile Ego is that Rotom got the, the, the KO there so you don't mm -hmm. actually get the beast boost onto Nile Ego which can make this attack even stronger but he doesn't have that. Instead the Max Rock Ball will not take out Grim Snarl. He's able to hang on and then this Volt Switch not, you know it's not doing damage, but more importantly, it gets rid of the Shadow Shield. Well, it breaks the Shadow Shield and it gets Rotom out to be able to come back in post overheat drop, right? You can't leave the Rotom in, just sat there with minus two special attack, expecting it to do really big damage. The Tabu Fini selection here seems really nice to me, uh, probably not that threatened uh, by anything going on that side of the field right now and, and can you know, just start to wear things down, particularly Zach's build with the choice specs, uh, being able to wear things down would be absolutely huge. A spirit break, yeah. Tabu is probably gonna be pretty okay with that, but the benefit of the choice specs kind of immediately removed by the special attack drop right there. And there is the trick room from Lunala, so Gavin is going to twist the dimensions here, and now those conventionally slower Pokemon like Grimson or Lunala, who is slower than Nihiligo, but specifically, probably that Groudon in the back is going to appreciate being able to move before the Nihiligo, before the Calyrex Shadow Rider. It could be pretty important for Gavin. The Trick Room here kind of, like, I think, seals up the next few turns, at least, for Gavin, right? Like, he is not threatened um, by being able to, to get outsped, right? Like, the Scary Face was sort of his first option, and Scary Face didn't work out for him. It went into a max guard, so hey, I pivot over to Trick Room, and it was the safest Trick Room in the world. You had Shadow Shield, you had Lunala, um, you know, being able to, to quite comfortably take that Volt Switch. Uh, and Grimstall, yeah, just going for it with the Spirit Break here. Tapu Fini took a good chunk of damage from that, and of course all the residuals between turns. So it may just get knocked out very quickly, as Tapu Fini has to pivot into Trick. Now, this is a very awkward one as Lunala gets the choice specs. Tabu Fini gets the power herb. Oh, but he didn't Lunala... click Meteor Beam. If he clicked yep. Meteor Beam, that would have been an amazing play because he would have been choice locked into a two turn move. So this choice specs is actually going to be pretty strong. The Tabu oh, Fini actually no. kind of kind of playing secret agent, helping out Gavin's team here by making that choice specs move, that move guys beam even stronger. Power Gem doesn't even get the KO on Grimmsnarl. Instead, the Sand gets it. So that's now two opportunities where Nihiligo could have got a beat boost that it was not able to accomplish. Yeah, the beast boost has just been missing so far in this game. And, and really, this Lunala should be in a great position to to try and close out the game. I mean, it's now Choice Specs locked into Moon Guy's Beam. That uh, feels pretty good if you yes. if you want to be locked into a move. I was worried about the Meteor Beam. Uh, but Groudon, oh, Groudon in the trick room here. My, my goodness. Of course, it, it's kind of awkward, right? Like, Rotom has taken a lot of damage already. That's an easy pickup for a Moon Guy's Beam. And assuming uh, there is a connection on the Precipice Blades, this Nile Ego is, is absolutely doomed when it comes to uh, Precipice Blades being able to get the knockout here. So. Uh, Gavin in this late game trick room, something we've been seeing growing over the past couple of weeks. That's three more turns. I don't know if Zach can stall it out, especially with the way his team is built, right? Like his team is not built to slow games down. And it is with the Calyrex Shadow Rider in the back. It's not It's not like the Calyrex can just take full knockouts on, on Groudon. Maybe Lunal, obviously, for the super effective hit, but uh, it's not like he can really compete in the damage and if Ooh. it's down 3v1. But Dark Pulse from Rotom Heat, you don't have to worry about it anymore because of the critical hit taking out Lunala. That Choice Specs is now irrelevant because Lunala is out of the game. Rock Slide from Groudon connects Ooh. onto both. It takes out both as well. That is a pretty important double hit on the Rock Slide there <laughs> because now you have Groudon versus Calyrex Shadow Rider. With two turns of Trick Room remaining, right? And that's the really, really big thing. This Groudon as well, you know, is quite hard to knock out because of that leftovers. And the Calyrex, you know, it needs to essentially, it's being asked a lot. The Calyrex needs to get out of Trick Room, which is two turns. Uh, that's going to be a double protect. So you're already fishing a little bit there. And then immediately after, you know, that Calyrex does 
does just right away need to get a one hit knockout on this Groudon or else it's going to be able to land literally any attack and get the knockout. So here we go. Let's see if he can go for it. There is one Rock Slide obviously not going to go into that. There is a world where Groudon there, misses. That's what I'm going to say. Ten percent of the time Rock Slide does not connect onto the Cowards. You have one turn left. Thirty percent chance he oh. does not get it. It's up to the Rock Slide. There's the animation. It connects onto Cowards and Gavin Michaels has won game one here in Vancouver. Ooh, that game got dangerously close. Very scary if he missed. If either he got the double protect or missed Rock Slide. Could be a different world. It could be a very different game, but Gavin seeing through the end game and you know what choices did he have? I mean, we've seen actually all of Groudon's moves over the course of the day. Both of them have the opportunity to miss. So that's a Precipice Blades and a Rock Slide. Uh, bulk up not going to help you out in the long run. And Protect is not doing enough damage. Uh, I think if you got through that, I still think it would have been able to take one of the Astral Mirages, even single target, because it was just at full health, right? right? And that is still a whole lot to be asked. But a critical hit, something like that coming through, would have been absolutely huge. Zach played that game really, really well. I do love the selection of Rotom here. Uh, but at the end of the day, Rotom and Nile Ego felt a little greedy to me. Yeah, I think the Rotom makes a lot of sense because it's strong as a dynamic max attacker into both Venusaur and Charizard. The only unfortunate thing is if Venusaur decides to sleep powder and you want Top Infinity to set up the Misty, uh, the Misty Terrain, Rotom doesn't benefit from it because he's not grounded, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very scary since he's not safety goggles. You kind of have to weigh your options if you're Zack is, you know, if the Venusaur is just going to Gigantamax, then I don't have to worry about sleep powder. I can save Rotom later on in the match, have Max Flare, maybe Groudon sets the sun up for me anyway. Uh, you will still have to probably break through the light screen on from Grimstar, which is another key factor. We kind of forget when once Grimstar leaves the field, you kind of forget just how important the light screen is. Well, here's the other thing. Zach bought four special attackers into a light screen. Right. It was always going to be a hard task, wasn't it? Like the Nihiligo damage felt really underwhelming because it was attacking into a light screen and it wasn't getting beast boosts. You know, the there was no way that there was going to be enough damage from that Calyrex into the light screen to be able to do it. So there's got to be a change. And the, the hard issue here, right? And this is something that we've talked about a few times over the course of the weekend, uh, you know, particularly myself and Scott, is how valuable are these things? You, you load your team of special attackers and you just run into light screen. The Rotom was being asked to do so much. The Rotom was being asked to Dark Pulse the Lunala, uh, deal with the Venusaur with fire attacks as well, uh, and then avoid everything from the Groudon. And this Groudon having Rock Slide just makes this so difficult for the Rotom. Yeah, it actually could be a little bit different of a scenario if the Groudon just had, say, Heat Crash and Precipice Blades, but because Gavin has opted for the Rock Slide in this matchup, it actually makes it kind of favorable when you have a ground I'm in against Rotom. So let's see what Zach's adjustment is. If he wants to force a game three, it's gonna have to happen here and now. If not, Gavin will walk away as the regional champion. Nihiligo and Grimstar is the lead for Zach, and then Grimstar Venusaur yet again for Gavin. But what do you do, you know, looking at this lead, you think, well, I imagine the Rotom's gotta be in the back, and, and here's an awkward one, right? What made way for the Grimstar? I really hope it's not the Rotom. But then at the end of the day, you're missing... Uh, then you're missing uh, Top Infinity? You're missing a Restricted as well, right? Like, it is a very aw awkward one. Uh, but Nihiligo going for the Protect here. I think Gavin, uh, either way, is just in a great position to just, yeah, throw up a Light Screen. Why not? Light Screen, no Dynamax or Gigantamax on his end here. So we will have matching Light Screens for the next eight turns. We're going to have some less damage output. And the Sleep Powder was the adjustment for Gavin deciding to try to put the Nihiligo to sleep. So the correct decision by Zach to just protect there and see what Gavin's plan was. But Grimstar can also just pull the play that Gavin tried earlier, which it went into a max guard, right? Which is just scary face and attack the, the Nile Ego, even if the Nile Ego goes for it. I think it's going to be a problem. I, I do like Zach's change up here, seeing just how impactful, of course, the light screen was against him. Maybe establishing that that's actually really good against a number of Gavin's team, but Gavin has Pokemon like Groudon that cause problems on the physical side of things that may force a reflect out, and that kind of means Gavin has a little more room to throw in scary faces, to try and play maybe turn over to those spirit breaks a little bit earlier as well so overall uh, i still think gavin's in a, a really good position just on the pokemon that zach has available to him uh, even though we don't know the back two and then this turn no dynamax out of night so instead it will be the meteor beam that two turn attack it is, you know, it's not like it's going to be super effective into either of these slots. It will be strong because of the special attack bonus you get from the first turn of the charge of Meteor Beam. And you are behind the light screen again, so the Venusaur is not great. But you don't even need the scary face if you're just going to max Quake directly into Nihiligo, bringing it down to around 30% 
of its HP. So all we have left on this turn are the uh, are the Grim Snarl's moves. They can go for potentially a Spirit Break, lowering the special attack on Venusaur. That's exactly what we're going to see from Gavin. That Spirit Break will go into Nightly Go. It is resisted, so Ooh. Nightly Go hangs on with 9 HP remaining and loses that special attack drop it just tried to set up and there is a spirit break in response yep spirit breaks for spirit breaks i mean you've both set up a light screen you're both spirit breaking it makes sense they're both following the same grim style game plan but because of the venusaur dynamaxing or gigantamaxing then it's actually just in a much better position right and what i could see here happening uh, would be something like a gmax vine lash let that deal with an illego and just keep putting down the pressure by putting down more damage every single turn Zack seems to be following this little bit of a game plan, right? You have to Meteor Beam to get the special attack boost. Once you've got the special attack boost, then you feel confident to Dynamax, right? Like in other formats, we've seen people Swords Dance and then Dynamax. And this is kind of the same idea, but, you know, the Spirit Break very nicely taking that away and maybe making Zack think a little bit more about, is it ready to Dynamax? I mean, it's definitely not the Nihil Ego right now. That is so low. As Nihil Ego switches out and Sol Galeo comes in. Okay, so Solgaleo is one of the adjustments for Zach in this game, too. That means he left either Rotom Heat or Tapu Fini in the back here in this matchup. G-Max Vine Lash will go into the Grim Snarl slot. Maybe Gavin saying, hey, let me get some damage on Grim Snarl, and then Nihiligo gets knocked out anyway, thanks to Vine Lash. But Nihiligo did switch out. Here is the Spirit Break, though, from Gavin into the Grim Snarl. Brings it down to under half of its HP remaining there thanks to the super effective attack. So what is this adjustment with, with Sol Galeo here? I guess you can get hit by a Max Quake and that'll really help you. it give you the weakness policy, but I don't know if Gavin's gonna let that happen. I mean, the, the Sol Galeo has to put in work. It's the adjustment that he's bought and it's gonna have to do a lot. My big concern is like, yes, it can take a Max Quake. Yes, it can get its weakness policy activated. Um, the big thing it can do back is of course the Max Mindstorm or Psychic Fangs. But this is my concern, right? If you just take out the Venusaur, which would be, you know, obviously disappointing for Gavin, but what does he bring in that just deals with you, right? Like, he has options at that point that, that come in and just, you know, quite comfortably handle the Solgaleo, um, just going all the way through it. The light screen does make it a little bit harder. I think what happens when the light screen comes to four is, you know, the light screen makes that weakness policy even safer to activate. Um, but at the same time, like, yes, the Solgaleo can deal with his Venusaur, but what does it do against the Groudon? Well, Togleo is going to Dynamax this turn, and Gavin actually max guarding on his last turn of G-Max with mm -hmm. the Venusaur. Reflect out of Grim Snarl makes sense. You have Togleo right in front of you, so you want to mitigate the damage from physical attacks, and Max Mindstorm, like you were predicting, goes into Venusaur's max guard. Here is Zach's Grim Snarl, though, with a Spirit Break towards the other one, not doing too much damage thanks to the Reflect being set up. Well, there is another option, right? Like, you want the Reflect because the Solgaleo is going to start causing problems if you uh, let it just sort of sit on the field for that long. Grim Snarl just clinging on. But it's another thing, like, it does look very wasteful on paper to let that last turn go begging when it comes to dealing damage with the Dynamax. But actually, I think at this point, the, Grim, uh, the Venusaur wants to be back in its regular form. Sol Galeo uh, would be something to deal with that. The, the only concern I have, right, is like the Sol Galeo can't be scary faced. So you do have to make the ground on play at this point. If you want to go for the fast sleep powder, you do have to make the ground on play. And that's something that, uh, you know, Gavin is going to be intricately aware of. But the ground on probably feels really good against the Sogaleo anyway. So I wouldn't be too concerned ab about that one, you know. Um, but the big thing is you really, really need to be careful. Um, you know, if you don't check that Sol Galeo, it could Max Mindstorm. That Max Mindstorm is going to completely shut the Grim Snarl out of being able to scary uh, face partners uh, at any point in the game. So it's a it's a tough one as Grim Snarl leaves the field for Gavin. There it is. Chlorophyll. There, the classic combination with dynamic speed change in Sword and Shield. You bring Groudon in, and immediately Venusaur gets the Chlorophyll boost. Sucker Punch, though, into his oh. own Solgaleo. I was going to say, what does Zach's Grim Snarl do? He only has three HP left, so you know it's going down at the end of the turn because of the Vine Lash. Oh. He's going to activate the Weeds policy. Nope. Solgaleo avoids, so now he's plus two. This Max Mindstorm is going to be massive into the Venusaur, knocking it out here. So, and and Zach also gets the free switch in to the back when Grim Snarl gets knocked out. Sleep Powder giveth, Sleep Powder taketh away. And in this turn, it really does taketh away because Gavin goes all in on Sleep Powder. And honestly, at the same time, Zach kind of goes all in on Sleep Powder too. He just goes all in on the miss yes. of Sleep Powder, <laughs> just commits to it and says, right, activate the weakness policy, max mind storm, on we go, son. But now this Sogale, I mean, there's obviously the screen's in play. It is going to be a little bit harder to deal that damage, but I mean, 
that's a really smart play from Zach, thinking I've seen Sleep Powder miss, I've seen Sleep Powder hit. I'm just gonna bank on the best outcome for me. And if that comes through, then we're in a really good position here. Here is the Cowrex Shadow Rider for Zach. So he's revealed his fourth Pokemon. All he has remaining in the back is a nine HP Nihiligo. So maybe there's a moment you bring in Nihiligo as like as kind of a sack so that the Cowrex doesn't mm -hmm. take any damage. But you do have one turn of Dynamax left. Yeah, I mean, I think Solgaleo is in a great position to take advantage of it, right? Look, it has the Psychic Terrain as well. There's no way to easily change that. And yeah, Calyrex leaving the field. Nihiligo probably out here to try and buy a little bit of time. So the Calyrex can feel a little bit better, particularly in a turn, um, you know, where it has options. But ooh, Max Steel Spike into the Grimmsnarl. That's going to help out huge against the Groudon. That's going to knock out Grimmsnarl and also importantly, give yourself a defense boost onto the Solgaleo as well as his teammate, even though it's not going to matter on the Nihiligo. It will matter for the Groudon though because he's going to be doing less damage with this Precipice Blades. Does connect onto both. I think Zach's actually kind of happy that the Precipice Blades did hit the Nihiligo so he can freely switch Calyrex back in. Yep, the Calyrex gets to come back in and, and obviously not take any damage from the G-Max Vine Lash as well. Uh, the G-Max Vine Lash went down way early in the game so that's the final turn. So the Calyrex gets to stick around uh, and take advantage of course of its uh, very, very standard at this point item choice of the Focus Sash. So nice heads up play there by Zach. Yes, you are down to your last two Pokemon, but you are in a restricted pairing. Uh, it's actually going to be restricted pairing versus restricted pairing, I would imagine. We'd be very shocked to see the Charizard or Incineroar here as, uh, yeah, there's the Lunala. So it is really the battle of restricted pairs, but there is a slight advantage. This Solgaleo, you know, has been getting some boosts and got to be feeling pretty good about that. And I love that it's coming down to these last four Pokemon because this is what Series 12 VGC is all about. It's about your restricted pairings and you use the other Pokemon to supplement your team of six. Now it's all, you know, as much damage as you can, your two most important Pokemon on the squad. And honestly, that damage, if you're Zach, you've got to throw that damage at Lunala because as soon as that Trick Room goes off, that's game over for you at that point. You've got two pretty pacey Pokemon and um, one, one of them is also very low as well. So as soon as the Groudon gets to land and attack on the Solgaleo, I'd say it, it's a, a bad time for, for Calyrex trying to deal with it. So you're going to have to really make sure you, you get rid of this Lunala in this turn. There's the Astral Barrage. It will be going into Shadow Shield, but still doing a monstrous amount of damage. Uh, and then Solgaleo, yep, following up with the Psychic Fangs. Oh, into the Groudon. I into like the Groudon this a lot. with Psychic Terrain, and it goes down. He gets rid of Reflect and Light Screen as well. Gets rid of those screens. That's another great effect out of Psychic Fangs. Trick Room from Lunala will get up, but at this point, uh, the Lunala is, you know, at half HP, and Zach still has two Pokemon remaining. Well, really good play from Zach, and something that I didn't get to touch on in the turn before. If you take out the Groudon, that's the spread attack gone. The spread attack is really important there. You know, if you're taking out one Pokemon, if you're leaving your opponent with one, you want to leave, like they want to have the Pokemon with spread attacks. And Precipice Blades and Rock Slide, guess what they both are, Joe? They're both spread attacks. So very smart play from Zach there to be able to, uh, you know, land that Psychic Fangs, get rid of uh, anything that it may be opening up an end game here. And a really well played set uh, takes us to game three. That's all we can ask for in the finals here in Vancouver is to get a game three between these two great trainers. I love when people get rewarded for their team building decisions. Psychic Fane, yes, is common on Sogaleo. It's not like it's off the wall, but one, he's already making that decision to run one of the not popular restricteds. Like there's no Zashi, there's no Kyogre on his team. He has the Sogaleo. Then he chooses Psychic Fangs over one of the other, you know, uh, great move coverage attacks that Sogaleo can have. And it really paid off for him on that turn because of the Psychic Terrain boost and the Psychic Fane is the ground line. It just, it worked out perfectly for him. Well, I also want to say that's a really aggressive play from Zack that he's been rewarded for, right? It's like the Groudon could have very easily protected just to let the Trick Room go up. So the Groudon eats the Psychic Fangs and then Lunala Trick Rooms and then your spread attack in Trick Room and Gavin not protecting that turn, Zack calling that correctly and being able to, to get the knockout that he needed on that turn was, was absolutely huge. So maybe Gavin not being respectful enough with the Protect, but also Zack, you got to say, he, he was rewarded for seeing the end game a couple turns ahead. It's definitely a difficult spot for Gavin because if you do protect Trick Room, yes, it wins you the game, but who knows what happens with Lunala because you break the Shadow Shield and then, uh, you know, Psychic Kick terrain, uh, or, you know, or the Mac. Or, because he, remember, so Glaive was plus two, so plus two Max Steel Spike into the Lunala also would have meant that you don't get to set up Trick Room. It was a very tough spot for Gavin. I will say this is one of your 50-50s, Joe, right? Like if you protect the Groudon and he doubles your Lunala, you lose. If you protect, or if you 
don't protect the Groudon, he doubles your Groudon, you lose. Right. So it's like the There's only the one scenario where you come the out. The scenario top. is you don't protect the Groudon. And he I mean doubling the Lunala, it's a tough one, right? Like I think doubling into the Lunala, yes, you stop the trick from going up, but then Groudon gets the spread attack, and that's absolutely huge in in that matchup. Um, you know, particularly if the Lunala manages to take a hit or, or something like that, um, that would have been really, really big. But yeah, it, it was a really tough end game. Um, you know, I think you needed to to maybe protect the ground on there. Like you protect the ground on and he doubles it and then you get Trick Room up. That would have been the play. Here we are in game three with Gavin and Zach. One game remaining between one of these trainers coming out as a regional champion. It cannot get any closer than this. All of the two O's we felt through the weekend have been worth it to give us this game three. And this is another mix up in the lead from Zach as well. This lead probably very respectful of what he saw in the, the last couple of games where we started to take a look at Sleep Powder in game number two. And, and there's one answer to that. And that is of course the Misty Terrain. Don't be dealing with those status effects with the Misty Terrain in action. And that's how Fini coming back to the four was actually left at home last time. But of course it doesn't matter when the Sleep Powder misses. Gavin making a pivot though over to Venusaur and Groudon immediately activating the Chlorophyll. I think the Tapu Fini kind of punishes that a little bit with the terrain. What he does need to do now, though, is find a safe switch out. Um, but both of these Pokemon are very much threatened while the status effects are being taken away. Typing-wise, this is a bit of a shocker. Yeah, I, I do wonder, because you essentially let Gavin have free reign to just click G-Max Vinelash because you know he's not going to be crazy enough to sleep powder with Misty Terrain, right? And choosing these two as the lead, I presume Grimmsnarl got left behind for Zax if you have your two Restrictors in the back. Neither of those are really going to want to take damage on, on the switch in if Gavin decides to die Max. It's the Rotom who would definitely be okay with taking a Vine Lash. It would be definitely okay with taking a Precipice Blades too if that's going to be the choice here as well. Uh, the you know the Precipice Blades not dealing damage there. Let's say the Vine Lash goes to the Tapu Fini as well. The Rotom kind of got him for free there. Um, but overall, I mean, this Venusaur could start to really run away with the game if it manages to just keep dealing damage and a big early Vine Lash, the residual damage is going to make something like the Rotom way easier to pick up with Rock Slide as well. So Venusaur, yeah, does just go for it very, very early on. That's a one-hit KO! Finny is down! I mean, Finny's not able to take that. That's not a question that we had to ask, and we, we've seen the answer for anyone curious. And there it goes, just immediately felled at the ground on Press Blade. So yeah, the Rotom Levitate helps you out there. But honestly, what do you do now against this, uh, you know, against this Venusaur? I guess you do take a little bit of solace in the fact that you made the right play on Rotom because he tried to press his blades there and you don't take damage. But it is unfortunate you lost Tapu Fini on turn one. Now you have to bring Nileo in or whoever your one restricted that you brought, which is, you know, if it's the, uh, uh, we're not actually going to find out. I do wonder what that last slot is. It's probably the Sogaleo because it was so strong in game, in game two, but you just never know. It has to be Dynamax Rotom here, right? Yes. I don't see a world where, okay, Nileo, the sun's already up. You can just Max Flare, and Grimstone's not out here. There's no light screen set up. A sun-boosted Max Flare from Rotom Heat. The Venusaur is terrified of that. Uh, the, uh, also, the um, the Nile Ego is just going to get completely taken out by a Precipice Blades. If it's Solgaleo in the back, guess what else doesn't like Precipice Blades? And I don't think the Calyrex is in a position enough to, to try and deal with it. Um, so yeah, here comes the Dynamax from Zach's side of the field. If it's not Rotom, I'd be absolutely appalled um, because I just don't know if Nihiligo is going to be able to do enough. And there it is. There it is. The big oven himself, Rotom Heat. We talked about it in team preview of this set that Rotom has a really strong matchup into Gavin's Gigantamax Pokemon. And here it is. Let's see if it works out for Zach. Nihiligo with the Protect, somewhat forced to protect mm -hmm. this turn because you do not want to take a Max Quake or a Precipice Blaze. And the Max Quake going into that slot means you will take resisted damage there, or excuse me, uh, mitigated damage because you're only taking 25% of the damage because of your Protect. Does give a special defense boost to Venusaur, which could actually be important, but that's that it. is somewhat boot, that's somewhat even out by the, the Sun being set up. The Rock Slide does connect onto Rotom. That's actually a pretty solid Solid amount of damage there. I was expecting a crit. There is the confirmation. He got a Max Flare. Zach's tournament riding on it, but he Max Flares the Groudon instead no. of the Venusaur. He's going for the Groudon, thinking that the Venusaur is going to protect. I think that may just seal up the game, to be honest, with this Rotom not being able to, to take hits very well. A critical hit from the Rock Slide is bringing it well into range. That is not the target you wanted, Zach. Yeah, and that's so unfortunate because now, Lego, you can't take Max Quake or Precipice Blade, so you wasted your protect. Do you 
Do you go for double protect again? Is that really your best odds of, of uh, coming back here? No, he doesn't even go for it. The Max no. Quake instead from the Venusaur towards Nihiligo, and that will be enough to knock it out. So Zach is down to his last two Pokemon. It's the Rotom Heat, and then one of his restricted pair in the back. We actually saw the previous turn that the Groudon was faster than Rotom Heat, so it's, it's not expecting a critical hit, he should be able to Ooh. take it. He actually takes zero damage because Rock Slide misses, and Max Flare finally into the Venusaur, but it's just too late. That's a plus two special defense Venusaur after the Max Quake boost. Yeah. Like, if he targeted that two turns in a row, Venusaur's out. Uh, you got to give credit to Gavin, right? He's played this pairing, this lead combination that we've seen for a couple of years now, really, uh, since we got Gigantamax Venusaur. He's played it flawlessly. It's a little bit disappointing to see Zach kind of fall for this trap a little bit. Like, it's the most obvious pairing on the team, and he's kind of taken the bait and, and absolutely uh, fallen for it. But those Max Quake boosts coming through are going to be absolutely huge. Um, but this Calyrex, you know, comes in. I mean, it's special defense boosts, right? Like, it's Max Quake special defense boosts. He boost. doesn't have Dynamax anymore, though. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know if it's going to be enough. The Groudon is still very, very healthy, and the Groudon's been benefiting from these special defense boosts as well. Yeah, so now if you Max Flare into the Groudon, you're not going to do enough damage, and you kind of you kind of don't want to Max Flare the Venusaur because it's, it's like excessive amounts of damage at that point, but you might need to because of the defense, or special defense boost, because I'm not sure if Astro Barrage, because it's spread and because of the Quake boost, is going to be enough to take out Venusaur. I do not think there is a way that these two special attackers can get through two special defense boosts from Max Quake and do the requisite amount of damage. And even if they do, right, like, they're basically being asked to do everything. This Rotom's already low. This Calyrex, I mean, it would love to see something like the Blue Nala, uh, but at the end of the day, right, I think Gavin just has enough in the tank to, to take a couple of hits, and it, it's going to try and pivot it around with some protects as well. Uh, so this has to be a big turn for Rotom. Oh, it gets no, nothing. the sleep powder, salt in the wound. Rotom will go to sleep on its last turn of Dynamax, Calyrex clicking Bulldoze as well. Uh, that was my big concern coming into this game, and I said it to you, right, it's like, the Rotom's a great matchup, but what if it just gets sleep powdered? And, and now we see, right, it's like, that is the focal point of the team. You're not able to do anything with at all. This pairing just being faster, so, so impactful for for Gavin. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty pacey Groudon, I'd say, and that is a, an exceptionally pacey Venusaur with the Chlorophyll active. This game has been a bit of a dismantling from Gavin, just going back to one of the most obvious modes on the team and really running with it. Right, and then you lead. It is unfortunate because you led Tapu Fini, Nihiligo into Venusaur Groudon. So Groudon handles Nihiligo, Venusaur handles Tapu Fini. Yeah. And because you don't have a great defensive switch in, because you have Calyrex instead of your Steel type in, in Solgleo, it's, it, it was kind of a difficult spot. The Rotom almost made it work, but uh, I, think it, I think it is more credit to Gavin then it is like a detrimental decision making on Zach's end. I do, I don't agree quite so much with the um, the Max Flare into the Groudon. I think that's kind of right, like game one, or game two rather, coming back to Horn. Oh, Rotom actually lived on one yeah, HP. Yeah, Ro Rotom took it. Uh, about, so. Don't know if it's going to be able to uh, keep on going after that Max, uh, the, the Rock Slide. But like my big concern from, from Zach's side, and, and not to you know harp on it too much, is the Max Flare into the Groudon. Now you knew that the, the Venusaur was going to be able to start building up those special defense boosts. And you, you've got to respect that, right? You've got to be able to say, nope, I'm going to be able to take you out before you get those boosts up. Because as we saw in game one, right? Special defense boosts are just such a massive problem for Zach's team. He did quite literally bring four special attackers again in this game. And yeah, I mean, he didn't need to light screen. He just needed to, to max Quake. And he let him get away with that a little bit too easily for my taste. But, you know, Gavin made all the right decisions. The max Quake was the right decision. He was a little bit fortunate to be able to, to be offered up juicy targets like Naya Ligo and, and Tapu Fini as well. Um, but immediately, it's going to be this game sealed up. Frenzy Plant connects. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The old guard is victorious. Gavin Michaels is your VGC 2022 Vancouver regional champion.